Hello and welcome to the October edition of USM Update. I'm Glenn Cummings. I'm the president of the University of Southern Maine. I'm delighted to have you with us tonight. Uh, we have uh, several things in the next hour that we'll be bringing forward to you. One, a piece of very good news about the USM Mechanical and Electrical Engineering Program. We will uh, also be exploring our CI2 lab. That's uh, a special lab that things are virtually interesting and really interesting in the CI2 lab. I hope you'll enjoy that as well. With us today, we have uh, people from the Honors Program. We have our director and a couple students in our Honors Program here at the University of Southern Maine. We're very, very proud of that program and it is growing gangbusters. We have almost a doubling of the number of students that we have in that program. With us uh, tonight is uh, Dr. Rebecca Nesetich. She is our director of the program and also has a doctorate in English and does a lot of teaching in the program. With her are two of her students. One of them is Leah Dell. Leah is an athletic training major, a senior this year, and she's been in the honors program I think all four years. And uh, finally, Fazil Sheikh. Fazil is a computer science student born in India and has come to the United States and has been uh, in our program for this last year and is loving the USM computer science program. And we we'll look forward to hearing from both of them a little bit. So we have lots of good news. So let me start off with you, Rebecca. You've been uh, full director this year. Congratulations. We're you. delighted to have you at USM. We've had a big surge in interest in the, in the honors program, and there are a number of reasons why. Can you talk about what's, what's happening? Yeah, sure. So I think um, there are probably a couple of things happening. I think first, uh, we've just had an incredibly supportive community rallying around USM in the past couple of years, and I've had a chance to meet with a lot of local counselors at high schools and some principals and vice principals as well, just to tell them a little bit more about our program and what sort of opportunities their high achieving high school students might have at USM. Mm -hmm. um, that's been really great for me to go out and meet those people and I think it's been really exciting for them to hear that their students don't have to leave the area or leave the state mm -hmm. to get a really great high quality education. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that we've done is we've revised and expanded our curriculum. So we're giving students more opportunities to engage in independent types of learning. Mm. Um, we'll talk a lot about study abroad. I think that's another reason yep. why interest in the honors program has surged. Mm -hmm. um, and, but and what do you do? What is your sense of that? Does it help? So if I graduate from USM and I can say I've got an honors designation, mm -hmm. Uh, have you had anecdotal information? This is particularly pertinent to Leah, who's about yeah. to graduate. So if she's out there looking for a job, does it, does it really help? Does it make a difference to know that she graduated uh, in the honors program? Yeah, I think it does. And I think um, in the USM honors program, that, that would help you in a couple of ways. First, basically, we have a GPA requisite. That means that a student graduating from the honors program is a student that has a high GPA. So that's the most basic way. But I think also students that graduate from the honors program from their freshman year to their senior year are encouraged to become independent critical thinkers. Yeah. The honors program curriculum is interdisciplinary yep. and it's integrative. And we hear so a lot about that from, from businesses. They say, you know, okay, yes, we, we want technical skills, the ability to write a good paragraph and all those things, but we really want people who can think critically mm -hmm. and work with other people, manage their time well, uh, and, and also communicate really, really well. Yeah. So it sounds like the, the skills are definitely there. Those so. are definitely things yeah. that we try to promote in the honors program. Great. Well, Leah, you've been with us all four years in the honors program, yeah. so you are kind of a, a model example of this and hopefully it will be a great model of somebody who uh, goes out and, and gets to fulfill your dream. Hopefully. You're already kind of, <laughs> kind of fulfilling your dream. Uh, you're down at Kenny Bunk High School, Kenny yes. Bunkport High School, Kenny Bunk High Kenny School, Bunk, yep. and you're doing some athletic training now. And how's yeah, that going? That's going really well. So my clinical site is there for the semester. We have every semester we get assigned a different place. It could be a high school, it could be a university. Um, and we work with the head athletic trainer there. Um, so I have a preceptor there. Mm -hmm. And I get to work with the um, high school athletes and yeah. just do day to day okay. stuff with them. By the way, working with athletes, you must like that, right? You're yeah. an athlete yourself, right? Yeah. So, so. Yeah, I ran track and cross country all through high school. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ran track here for two years. They're not too difficult to, to deal with, the athletes. No, they're yeah, great. They're, 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 yeah. we've, we've got some very classy It's a fun athletes. age group, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Did you work with our athletic program here at USM? I did. My sophomore year I worked with women's ice hockey and then men's and women's lacrosse. Nice. Great. Well, yeah. What a great, great, great experience for you. And what an interesting profession. Now, is your goal, do you want to be doing this, uh, you know, uh, taping up ankles for, uh, for, the, <laughs> for the Celtics and uh, the Patriots, or, or is or your goal to be here, like, at the high school level? Yeah, I think ultimately I'd like to be at high school level. It's a really unique, uh, really, time of life because you get to kind of mentor along with taking care of their physical health. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoy that aspect of it. Wonderful. And Fazil, you just you just joined us, uh, and uh, Fazil, tell us a little bit about first of all, computer science. Has this been something that you've really liked to do since you were very very small, or is this suddenly something that you've just picked up in the last few years? Um, definitely something I've been anticipating for since I was really young. Um, I love programming. I already know five languages. So I would love to add uh, programming languages to my list. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Just tell us, because this is uh, your reflection of USM students. Mm -hmm. Tell us those five languages that you um, already speak. Obviously, you speak English very, very English, well. Of course. Um, I also know Hindi, Gujarati, and Urdu, Punjabi, and then English, too. So those are some important languages in India right. that you just learn yeah. as you grow up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, And when you add like some computer language, which a lot of people still like don't know about still considered a language sure. so um, it's like a whole new experience you learn another language yeah. so it's a lot of fun and I think as in today's society these languages are really important because we have these social media apps those yeah. are created by computer scientists so yeah. that's what I love yeah. about um, programming yeah in and it, it, it uh, not only is it a, another language but it's, it's absolute added value. I was just out talking to CEOs about what they needed and they said, how many computer scientists can you give us because we need people <laughs> to code for us. We need mm -hmm. people that actually we can tell you, uh, we can tell them what the data requirements are and what we need to pull out of data, but we don't have the ability necessarily to code as senior managers and we need people like uh, Fazil. So. Yeah. So, so you had mentioned, Rebecca, the honors program has a special zing to it this year, which Dad. is probably disappointing to Leah, who uh, kind <laughs> of missed bit. a little bit. Um, <laughs> okay. So tell us about uh, this new uh, commitment we've made to all incoming honors students. Yeah, so this is a really exciting opportunity for honors students. Um, we were the lucky beneficiaries of a private gift from an alumnus who was at University of Southern Maine and spent her career at Framingham State University and she donated about five hundred thousand dollars to the university to support study abroad for worthy students mm -hmm. with a certain GPA. All employee. our students are worthy. But All uh, our students are worthy. Well we are drilling this down on the honor yeah. students. So. But this this gift had uh, students with a set GPA point and uh, it's accessible to students across the university but it doesn't matter what your major is um, but it should be someone with a high, a high GPA. Um, in addition to that, I won a Maine Economic Improvement Fund grant, uh, and the way that I sort of leveraged uh, our uh, argument was that our students are human capital, so our students are going to be able to engage in the North Atlantic region, which is becoming increasingly important. Um, area of commerce for Maine, mm -hmm. um, having those experiences, they can then come back, finish their schooling, and they're ready for careers in the greater Portland area. Yeah. yeah. Fazil, you are going to be the beneficiary. Don't rub it in with Leah. <laughs> so tell us, did, did that make a difference for you in your decision to, uh, to be part of the honors program? Is that something that's attractive to you, to, to be able to do an international experience? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we are getting an opportunity to be able to do this kind of stuff. You don't really get to do this stuff, like especially travel internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something you really get, uh, get to do. So it's definitely a plus point. Yeah, I'm okay. really excited <laughs> about it. And yeah, it's just one of the things about, uh, about the honors program I really like, mm -hmm. things like this. Right. So. 
Well, I want to thank all three of you. Uh, thank you for coming in and talking to us about the Honors Program. Uh, if people are interested, they get a hold of Rebecca Nesetich at USM. Uh, it's up on our website, but uh, you can just call the main number and ask for Rebecca, and uh, we'll make sure that we get back to you quickly if we miss you. Uh, thank you again, all three of you. Wish you good luck, Leah, and, and uh, you. your, your job search work, okay. and uh, Fasil, wonderful to have you as well, and good luck with your, uh, your progress through the next few, thank few you. years. Uh, coming up, we have uh, a, a little uh, something to share with you about our engineering program. Our, our accreditation is at a whole new level of national credibility, and we'll be uh, leading that story rate right when we get back. Hello and welcome back to USM Update. I'm Glenn Cummings, the president of the University of Southern Maine. Uh, as I discussed, we are in the process of, of announcing and are very, very pleased uh, with the recent news out of our engineering program. We have had, uh, for a number of years, we have had electrical and mechanical engineering. Uh, electrical has been certified at the highest level of national accreditation for a number of years. And this month, we have received the excellent news that the Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology has also fully accredited our mechanical engineering program. That puts us on the same level of engineering credibility as the University of Maine at Orono and Maine Maritime. We have over 22 uh, companies, high-tech companies, very, very uh, well-respected companies in this area who are presently hosting our engineering students in their organizations, in their corporations, and we are extremely proud of that. In addition, the, the demand, the enrollment for those two programs at, is at an all-time high, and we are just delighted to see this level of increase and interest in these two programs, most likely because of how connected we are to the community and to, to our corporate partners. So with that, let's take a minute to go out and take a look at the John Mitchell Center, which is our Department of Engineering. Again, because the waveform is created with an electronic circuit that's built into the, the, the kit. Then this will go into a circuit that you have to build I have suggested not gates, but you could use NAND gates as well, the 7400 or the 7404. We have uh, approximately 200 students in the program, just a little bit over 200 students in the program, roughly broken into two equal parts between electrical and mechanical. And mechanical is maybe a little bit yeah. larger in terms of number of students. We have seven full-time faculty, and on the average about four part-time faculty each semester delivering uh, our courses. The presence of engineering here at USM I think is critical to 
both the region and the state as a whole. We provide uh, additional access to engineering, you know, in the major demographic center of the state as well, I think, in the economic center of the state. Um, access to engineering for students who are, pri who are in large numbers place-bound, who most likely would not be uh, able to enter an engineering program either out of state or even uh, at the University of Maine. When I was looking at going back to school, I weighed a number of different schools, um, Orono being one of them and the USM being another one and a few out of state. Um, Maine's in-state in tuition, you really can't beat it. Uh, if you look at other states, even in-state tuition, Maine's, is, Maine's schools are great value. I went to school out in Colorado for a couple years and then I uh, had a rough time, came back home where I grew up in southern Maine and um, USM was close to home. It's much more affordable than going out of state and uh, now I'm here. We have two engineering programs at USM, an electrical engineering and a mechanical engineering program. Both of these programs have been recently accredited by the Engineering Commission of ABED. Uh, our accreditation period will run from 2016 to 2022. So we received the maximum allowed period of six years. Uh, we asked for the maximum two years retroactive accreditation and, and we did receive that. So students graduating in May of 2013 are uh, considered to be graduates of an accredited program. Accreditation is required for students who potentially would like to get a professional engineering license in any state in the country. Maine, as every other state, requires that the student graduate from an accredited institution. So that is, that is important. The more important um, aspect of the accreditation is when you're not told that that affects your, your job placement. Um, even though a job application may not say uh, ABET accredited degree required, if you're going head to head with other individuals that have that same degree that you do, but theirs is ABET accredited, then you're going to be passed over for that degree just because it shows that they've been taught to a, uh, a quality of standard that's familiar to the hiring managers. This past May, we graduated 52 students, which is a record for us. Two years ago, we graduated uh, 24 electrical engineering students, which is also was the largest number that we ever had. These are substantial numbers of graduates, of engineers entering the local, the regional and the national employment base. And definitely in Maine, we know from statistics and data, economic data, that engineering companies, due to upcoming retirement, are searching for new engineering employees and they need to be able to find them both from local institutions, local public institutions like ours. We have um, a program with a dedicated faculty, a faculty that has a lot of experience. We uh, full-time faculty teach most of the classes in each semester. Uh, a lot of the prof professors are very genuine about, uh, about their subjects. The one-on-one -on -one interaction that I got before I ever even thought about signing up for classes um, really pay, played a huge role in my deciding to go to USM. And then, of course, seeing the, uh, the laboratory experience that you would get as a student was the, uh, was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to say. We are located in um, a, a great facility, a modern facility, um, in the John Mitchell Center on the Gorham campus. And we have several labs for both the electrical and mechanical engineering programs. They are really modern facilities that we upgrade on a regular basis. USM really prides itself on getting students hands-on experience. I think hands-on learning is extremely valuable. It allows the engineering students to experience the real-world engineering so they can better understand the problems that engineers work on every day. It also teaches them teamwork and leadership, which are key in today's work environment. Uh, from your very first class in your mechanical degree, you are told that you need to be in the labs working with your hands, learning how a lot of these machines operate. And it's the same thing with the electrical side, where you have to be in the labs designing circuit boards and building your own circuit boards. And it starts right from your very first class and continues all the way to your capstone projects. And for me, that was, that was absolutely vital to choosing USM as a school because I'm a very hands-on person and don't want to just sit and do theory all day long. It's in, as important to apply the knowledge that you're learning as it is to learn the knowledge. 
So I got my foot in the door at Pratt & Whitney um, in my second year at USM. I applied through their traditional internship program and really normally it only runs for three months it goes till the end of the summer but because i'm local to the area and did a good job in my internship they decided to keep me on as an employee after the internship term limits ran up regardless of whether or not you're traditional or non-traditional as i was um, work on getting experience uh, internships are not required however they will put you leaps and bounds ahead of the competition when you get out into the job market. Just getting the experience of working and applying your knowledge is, is invaluable. Our role, um, you know, is both providing additional access and, and also um, uh, educating uh, skilled future employees that these companies can count on. Engineering program is something we're extremely proud of and we're very, very happy that uh, our program uh, tonight was able to feature them. Our thanks goes out to Mary Use uh, Jankowski, the chair of the engineering department at USM for his help in uh, bringing us deeply into the John Mitchell Center and showing us what's going on there. Also our thanks goes to the team at Pratt and Whitney for their help and uh, giving us another site, an example of how our students are out there involved in helping uh, create a more prosperous main economy. And now we move to what we call the CI2 lab, a virtual lab and a real lab in which great ideas are beginning to take place. We now take you to our CI2 lab right after this break. What if I can't afford it? What if I don't fit in? What if it doesn't lead to a good job? What if I don't have the time? What if life gets in the way? What if I'm not inspired? What if I'm too late? What if it's not worth what it? If, what if I don't find what, if? what I want? What if? What, what, if? What, if? what if? What if the University of Southern Maine? This is the University of High Achievers. The Determined. The Multitaskers. And the Nine to Fivers. This is the University of Dynamic Locations. And Real World Connections. This is the University of Affordability and Convenience. This is the University of those who have served. And those who succeed. This is the University of Everyone. The University of Southern Maine. Find yourself here. Welcome back, and uh, as promised, we're now going to take you to what we call at the University of Southern Maine our CI2 lab. It is filled with some creative professors and some fantastic students that are trying to make different projects work, both commercializing them and for research purposes. One of the great features of the University of Southern Maine is that undergraduates in many, many programs are doing real-world research in the CI2 lab is a great example of exactly that. You'll be able to see uh, some of the students working on some of these projects as we take you now to USM's CI2 lab. sort of made most of this all happen, Rafael Deluzio. Rafael, welcome, and uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on here. Well, thank you, Glenn. I, I actually didn't make it all happen myself. It's all the students. I mean, everything that happens here is all about the students. The CI2 is a hands-on experiential work lab, and it's all about undergraduate research and undergraduate learning. It's a space where undergraduate students, I keep using that word over and over, so I want to emphasize it's, Very it's a important. unique. We like that when undergraduates are involved <laughs> yes, in research do. around here. Yeah, that's a good thing. And it's really unique because there is no space like this anywhere else. So the thing I'm working on right now is actually an application called Tiltbrush. And what Tiltbrush is, is it was developed by Google to show off VR. And you can actually paint in a 3D world. So you see as I'm moving around the headset, it's moving around. We have a lot of projects this particular semester. Like I said, we have augmented reality projects and virtual reality projects. We have students partnering with Maine Med, for instance. And they're working on a virtual surgery project where a neurosurgeon can perform 
uh, the removal of an aneurysm or a tumor and a surgical student can perform it alongside them so they could learn how to do it without necessarily harming the patient. It demonstrates one of the cool things about gaming, the fact that we're going to try to use this for main med. Uh, the thing about gaming is that even though you may create something that at first seems like really silly and not very useful, in that process you create something that might actually be very useful to a lot of people. research says that when undergraduates are involved in research that's authentic with a, an inspiring professor like yourself and some of the others, uh, it's been, it makes a huge difference in their undergraduate experience. So it's a really great minor for USM because students from every discipline can join in sure. and build games and teams of students are going to be up here in the CI2 building game. We're about to hire um, Susanna Gordon-Messer, and she comes from MIT's combination of game and educational lab, which they call the Arcade. And she's going to be up here, and she's bringing four projects that students will be able to collaborate with MIT students work with. So we're going to build a pipeline connection between our students at the CI2 at USM sure. and USM working with MIT students That's at their game wonderful. lab. That's wonderful. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed our tour of our CI2 lab at the University of Southern Maine. Special thank you to Rafael uh, Deluzio for his uh, leadership over at that lab, and I know the students who come in there have just been excited from the beginning uh, about their ability to make some, some very creative uh, enterprise in their work there. So we're delighted, and thank you, uh, Rafael, for, for inviting us up. I also want to mention before we close tonight that we have a very special day coming up at the University of Southern Maine, and that day is November 15th. It is our Day of Giving. It is also the National Day of Philanthropy. And as many of you know, uh, over 50% of our students are first-generation students. Their parents did not, uh, do not have a college degree. Many of them did not go to college at all. And it is a big issue for a first generation. And I can say that personally, being one of the first uh, in my family to have a four-year degree, it makes a big difference uh, whether our college is affordable. And so that day of giving is designed around student scholarships and giving them the support that they need to be successful in a great school. We're just delighted uh, to be able to kind of push that out to you, ask you for your help. You can get on our website. It's easy to give. Uh, and there are all kinds of ways that, uh, that you can support us, and this is one of the most concrete and best ways that, that you can do that. And we're hoping on November 15th and before, at any time, you're willing to help uh, make education a reality for your local students, and it's good for all of us. Uh, I also want to say our next show will be November 7th, just before that big national election that is coming up, and statewide election as well. Uh, and we will be on at 8.30 on Monday nights uh, throughout, the, throughout the month of both October and November. Thank you again for watching this episode, this October episode of our USM Update. And I hope you enjoyed our show today. It's delightful to be here. Thank you.